In the earlier session, we introduced the concept of basis vectors for a linear vector space. In today's session, we are going to introduce the concept of inner product or dot product. In a given vector space V, inner product is a map from two copies of the vector space V cross V to the set of real numbers or the set of complex number depending on the situation such that for all u and v which belongs to the vector space capital V. So here inner product is denoted either using the notation of u dot v or u comma v within a parenthesis or using bracket notation as you see it here. So in other words if you give me two vectors then the inner product is a map which will give us a real number or complex number depending on the kind of vector space we are dealing with. And it also satisfies following four properties. The first property says that if you take the inner product between u and v, it should be equal to the inner product between v and u. In case we are dealing with a vector space over complex number then the first property should read as the inner product between u and v is equal to the complex conjugation of the inner product between v and u. The second property says the inner product of a vector u with itself is always greater than or equal to 0 and it is 0 only if the vector is null. The third property of an inner product must satisfy that is if you take addition of two vector b and w and if you take a dot product or inner product with another vector u it should be same as inner product between u and v plus inner product between u and w as you see it here and the fourth property says that you multiply a vector v by a scalar number a and if you take an inner product of the resultant vector with u, the in, it should be same as the inner product between the vectors u and v multiplied by the scalar number a. And if you multiply the vector u by a number b and take an inner product with v as you see it here, then it should be b times the inner product between u and v. For the second case, if you are dealing with vectors over complex number c, then it should be the inner product between b times u with the vector v is equal to complex conjugation of the number b that is b star times the inner product between the vector u and v. In other words, inner product or dot product is a map which takes two vectors and gives one number. The number could be either real number or a complex number depending on the type of vector space we are dealing with and the map must satisfy four properties. Those are given here 1, 2, 3, 4. Then we call the map to be an inner product or dot product. So now let us consider an example of dot product or inner product. If a vector u can be expressed as ui times ei cap as you see it here and the vi vector is expressed as vi times ei cap then a dot product or inner product can be defined as u dot v which means the same thing as u comma v within a parenthesis is equal to u i b i summation over i. We can check this particular definition satisfy all the four properties required for it to be a inner product or dot product. So if you are dealing with vector space over set of complex number, the inner product should be modified here. As you see it here, the ui should be replaced by the complex conjugation of ui. Let us now introduce the notion of Kronecker delta. The Kronecker delta is defined as delta ij which is equal to 0 if i is not equal to j and it is equal to 1 if i is equal to j. Using Kronecker delta, the inner product can be conveniently expressed as summation over ij uibj times delta ij. 
So let's see, consider the example for three dimension. So i and j takes values in 1, 2, 3. Then the dot product between u dot v can be written as summation over i and j times ui vj times delta ij, which we can explicitly write in terms of nine terms, as you see it here, which are e1 v1 times delta 1 1 plus e1 v2 times delta 1 2 and so on. Now, by definition, chronic delta delta 1 1 equal to 1 and delta 1 2 equal to 0 and so on. So, in other words, out of nine terms, six terms simply drops out from the definition of chronic delta and the final product becomes u1 v1 plus u2 v2 plus u3 v3 as you see it here, which now can be written as summation over i equal to 1 to 3 ui vi. It's the same as the definition we introduced earlier. We'll see later that Kronecker delta is a very powerful mathematical symbol which will be very, very useful later on. Now we're going to define what is called norm of a vector or magnitude of a vector. The norm of a vector u is denoted as, as you see it here, which is the inner product of u with itself and its square root. Norm is always taken to be positive. If a vector has unit norm, that is norm u is equal to 1, then the vector is called a normalized vector. Next, we define the concept of orthogonality. Two vectors u and v are said to be orthogonal if their inner product is zero. Maybe I should emphasize one point here. So an abstract vector, you need not write an arrow or bar on the top. However, in case there is a notational conflict, then you better denote the vector either by bar or an arrow. Now let us consider a set of vectors, say EAI caps that satisfy the inner product between two such vectors EI and EJ is given in terms of Kronecker delta, delta IJ as you see it here. Then these vectors are orthogonal to each other as you can see that EI times EJ equal to zero for i not equal to 0. On the other hand, if you take the norm of such a vector, that is if you take the inner product of any vector e i with itself, it skips you 1 as the chronic delta is 1 when both indexes are equal. These vectors are also called orthonormal because these are both orthogonal as well as normalized. Let us now consider the example of basis vectors which are used in Cartesian corner system, namely i cap, j cap, and k cap. These vectors are defined to be such that i cap dot i cap equal to j, j cap dot j cap equal to k cap dot k cap equal to on and i cap dot j cap equal to j cap dot k cap equal to k cap dot i cap equal to zero. Now, if we denote the vector i cap as e1 cap, the vector j cap as e2 cap, and the vector k cap as e3 cap, then the dot product between the vector e i cap and vector e j cap is given by chronic delta, delta i j. Hence, these vectors by definition are orthonormal vectors. And these vectors are also linearly independent, which span the vector space. So therefore, this is an example of orthonormal basis vectors. I hope you have enjoyed today's session. In case you have a question, comments, or a suggestion, please feel free to write them below in the comment section. And if you would like to follow the physics discussion here, then you are welcome to subscribe to this channel.